Hello, everyone, and thank you again for joining us for Sermon Recap. Sermon Recap, Sermon Recap. recap. Echo, echo. And sibilance, one, two, three, yes, one, two, right. three, yes. Um, yesterday, we're doing this a little bit earlier, even than the last time we did it. Hence um, the yellow shirt, because he told me not to wear these kind of colors when I'm on camera. Yep. But I he just came back from vacation, so I've got a little more color in my face. He has so a different hopefully. kind of glow. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Pastor Stewart, welcome yes. back. Thank it, you. It was Good nice to be to back. You in the pulpit yesterday. Oh, that was really cool. Well, it was you. nice having Pastor Stephen. Yes, I've watched it. It was very, he, he did a great job. Go back and watch uh, whatever date that was, July yeah. 12th, 11th, 12th. Yeah. Um, you talked about Genesis 15. Yeah. So we're just going to dive right in yes, here. Yes, yeah, okay, we got to jump. We, go. we got to go. Overview of Genesis 15. Now, I, I gave a, a, a direction here. 60, 60 seconds. seconds. Tell, us, tell us what chapter 15 was all about. In 60 seconds, God shows himself in a greater way to Abram and makes a covenant with him that he reminds him of in two chapters when he finalizes the plan with Abram. Okay. So that was less than 60. Okay. Not bad. <laughs> all right. But there's a lot of cool stuff in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Two things you talked about that yes. come up when it, whenever anyone has any kind of spiritual conversation. And that's faith and being right with God or righteousness. Right. And so I, I figured I'd ask you and you unpack it because okay. you laid it out there uh, yesterday with Genesis 15, yeah. 6. And that's a big verse. Right. Um, I mean, when you said it's a pivot point to Janice, you said that in both services. Yes. How, how right. you tell Janice these things. Um, Genesis 15 really is a pivot point. It's a pivot in the whole Bible because it reveals the, the way of salvation, which is belief but not in the english word belief the english word belief is good yeah i believe that uh it, and even if i'm wrong i believe it but the biblical word for belief is to place your trust in it it, it has action involved so when it says abram believed god he literally put his trust in god didn't mean he doesn't mess up because next chapter he's going to mess up again but but he put his trust in god and it says and god counted it to him as righteousness so faith is putting your trust in, and we're illustrating by sitting in chairs, the mm -hmm. illustration I used yesterday. If I were standing up, I could tell you in the English way, I believe this chair would hold me. But in a biblical way, it's not holding me because I didn't put my weight on it. And I promise you, I am not trying to hold my weight up. I'm resting in this chair. So faith is a resting in the promise of God, mm -hmm. or a trusting in the promise of God. And so God brings Abram finally to that point, because Abram is... God says, hey, I'm your shield, I'm your protection, I'm your reward. And Abram goes, yeah, but I don't have a baby yet. And so uh, God reveals himself to him by taking him outside and showing him the stars. Mm -hmm. Interesting point I didn't bring up yesterday for two reasons. One, I didn't think of it. And two, uh, the, the guy told it to me after church. Then I thought of it and I went, that's cool. <laughs> um, but that Abram came out of a pagan family that that. He was an unusual character in his own family that he followed Yahweh instead of the pagan religion. But he would have an understanding of their paganism. And part of paganism is like astrology and the stars and all of that. So the interest, I never put that together. And mm. a, a, a layman in our church who's a very thoughtful man said, I thought about that as you're saying that. God takes him outside and says, look at the stars. And what God was saying and doing that, and it's not a, 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 in explicit in the bible but we kind of can make it implicit god was going see that i made that and i'm gonna make your children like that there'll be as many as the stars mm -hmm. but for a man who grew up in a pagan world and you could compare i thought man you can make a sermon out of that and the tower of babel mm -hmm. where they were building this structure to the heavens to study astrology and god goes forget that abram look at the stars i made those i'll take care of you mm -hmm. so that so and then Abram believed God, that God didn't say, no, trust me. He said, this is why you can trust me. I am this mm -hmm. all-powerful, all-knowing creator God that has said, hey, I'm, I'm bringing you in. You're going to be my man. Mm -hmm. And we look at Abram as this great man of faith, but we now have the opportunity to be as great as Abram, uh, not to be the father of many nations, but to believe God because he's revealed even more to us, which is why the writer of Hebrews says if back then they were punished for the slightest unbelief, how much more would we escape if we neglect this 
full revelation of salvation in Christ mm -hmm. that God paid the price. God's so, done even more. Even more. To reject that right. is, is even worse. So, yeah. and as I said yesterday, hence the series title, Back to Basics, this is the, Genesis 15 is the, that basic beginning that is, continues to be revealed through the rest of Scripture. And as you said in, in, in your questions here that Paul quotes that, and he actually quotes mm -hmm. it in a couple of different books. I, I think Abraham there were four book. times I was yeah, looking that it, up. Uh, it's in Hebrews 11 and Romans, I think in, Twice Gal in Romans. Galatians, and Galatians he compare, yeah. compares uh, chapter 16 of this, that Abram believed God, but he had a child by his wife's servant, and, but that wasn't the child of promise, mm -hmm. you know. And so we are members of the children of promise mm -hmm. um, that, that, uh, that are grafted in mm -hmm. or, or become part of the family of God, the people of God. Yeah. Um, righteousness, that's yeah, the other term. Yeah, another, another Man, big word, yeah. The, the, and of course, righteousness is derivative of holiness as well. And holiness means to be set apart, special. Um, and I've always referred to it because I grew up watching, you know, Raha and that stuff. And uh, where you cut a little doggy or a small calf out of the herd and they would brand it. And that's sort of what holiness means, that we've been set aside, we've been branded as belonging to God so our entire lives, and again, more revealed in the, Old Test in the New Testament, but our entire lives are wrapped up in being, being representatives of God. We're wholly devoted to God's use. Whatever he wants to do with us, we ought to be, yeah, I'm okay with that. Mm -hmm. um, and and, and I, I wish I really had that attitude, but sometimes I do not. Um, so righteousness is something that is given to us because we're a fallen creation. And so the Bible tells us that Christ's righteousness has been, and the word in the Bible is imputed, but it means charged to our account. Mm -hmm. So, um, again, just been on vacation and used a credit card for a lot of stuff because we're in a, a place where that would be a lot more convenient carrying cash. You don't want to get robbed. And, uh, and so I ran up a charge. Well, now I owe that money back to that credit card company, mm -hmm. which I will pay this month. But... Um, we owed a debt, my credit card debt got so big I couldn't pay it, mm -hmm. and then somebody paid it for me. I didn't pay it, but it was paid, mm -hmm. and that's what Jesus did. We had a debt that we couldn't pay, mm -hmm. so he paid it, and it's as if we paid it, which is, which is uh, uh, well, I'll come back, justification, okay. mm -hmm. but righteousness is because he paid it, now he owns us. If he paid our debt, he owns us so when we come in belief we are bought with the price of his blood and he gives us his righteousness he clothes us in it and the, the old testament illustration comes later in david's life i used this yesterday uh that there were only two suits of armor in the days of king david and saul uh, saul had one and jonathan had one david probably got more and the reason there's only two is they didn't know how to work iron and the philistines Philistines did and so they the Philistines are very stingy with their weapons because mm -hmm. why would you you know they they're attacking Israel why would you equip them to fight back but Saul and Jonathan managed to get some armor so Jonathan knowing that David had been appointed by God to become king though he was the heir of the current king knew that God was changing over to David and loved David so much and said I will serve you but you know he knew how it worked back then I'll probably be dead when that happens he gave his armor to David, mm -hmm. and David put on Jonathan's armor, and Jonathan's request was, take care of my family if you become king. And David said, of course, and to seal that covenant, he gave him his armor. So the Bible says, and David, in doing that, it was a symbolic thing, that covenant mm -hmm. relationship he put on Jonathan. So he had to act like Jonathan toward Jonathan's family. Mm -hmm. So when we come to the New Testament, it says, the old, we put on Christ. Mm -hmm. And so Christ robes us in his righteousness. We know in our core that as this body, sin still dwells according to Romans 7. And so that's why that seed's got to be put in the ground and be resurrected a holy body. But in the meantime, when God looks at us, all he sees is Jesus because we're wearing his costume mm -hmm. of righteousness. And then that works into us. He works his righteousness into us. So well, I have a question kind of about that. Yeah, um, go ahead. Because... Uh, as you read in the Psalms, you hear a lot, a lot, it's all over the place, of David talking about his own righteousness. Yes. And his own integrity. Right. And when you, it, it almost sounds like boasting. Right. So obviously that's not what we're talking about. Right. But there is a similarity. 
um, between righteousness well, and what you're talking about putting on righteousness. Yeah. Staying and, with staying staying with David. When you read David, and especially in the Psalms, you go, "This dude. I mean, he is you know Jesus in the line of David, that kingship." Mm -hmm. But it's almost as if David understood of Jesus, even though he he never mentions it that way, and because he also David also said, "I was." conceived in sin mm -hmm. not meaning his parents sin but that at the moment of his conception he was a sinner so he understood the sinful that. nature yeah. he understood grace almost better than Christians today understand it and by he understood that his righteousness was in God but he did attempt to walk in his integrity and so much so the Bible says he's a man after God's own heart so that when he grossly sinned and that was with he did it more than once but we always look at Bathsheba and Uriah a king in that day, when the prophet comes and says, you're the man that sinned, the king would go, uh, appreciate your opinion, but off with his head and just we kill you. Mm -hmm. Not David. David repented. Mm -hmm. David always tried to come back to God, and we'd say, well, I messed up. He, he recognized his sin. He had that humility so he could claim, I walk in integrity, because even if I mess up, if you show me I messed up and I kind of missed it, I will repent, and he had to do that you know, two or three big times in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that that righteousness, he wasn't claiming, I don't think he was claiming that he was righteous. It was more that I do everything I can to follow God. And, mm -hmm. and we ought to be the same way. Mm -hmm. But well, now Jesus we, said, be careful of practicing your righteousness before, before other people. Men, right. Yeah. It's it's a quiet integrity. And, and it's been said that reputation is what people think about you. Integrity is who you are. And your integrity is shown by what you do in private mm -hmm. when nobody's looking. And and so it, it it is that am I faithful to God? Am, do I see myself as set apart to God fully? Because the New Testament says you've been bought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your mortal body. Mm -hmm. But but we also have to realize, no, it, Christ's righteousness has been credited to our account. So when we go before the throne of grace, just that it is grace and mm -hmm. it was bought by the by the righteousness of Christ. Um, and, and we live in a way that David couldn't live, mm -hmm. but that already done for us. It's, 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 you will never get to the depths of that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's so rich. Yeah, I, I, was, I found myself walking both ways of, of this faith and righteousness because it, it feels many times that in the Bible, righteousness is, what did you call it, a quiet, what, is, what was the righteousness? You said... Um, um, you, d you defined it. What is integrity. righteousness? Yeah, it's, it's a quiet integrity. Yeah, yeah, just yeah, so that you are, you're always fully aware that your life belongs to God. And yeah, I don't know what I said. Yeah, we'll that's go okay. Back and check, take take <laughs> later. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. Um, well, it brings us to the end here yes. and the summary. Now, I got a, what does what will it look like? Kind of question. So, yeah. what do you what do you, Pastor Stewart, hope to see in people's lives? as their faith increases and as their righteousness increases. Yeah, and, and again, faith is resting in the promises of God. And, and But what, what does that look what like? What that looks yeah. like is, number one, I am quick to repent. I walk in repentance. I, a, a, a Puritan once said, I must repent of my repentance, that even in our repenting we sin because we are so flawed we can't even get there. And uh, so w that we will be repentant in our lifestyle. In other words... We are constantly understanding that, but then we don't live defeated like, oh, I'm a horrible sinner. We say, but I've been adopted by God. He's given me his righteousness. I have the, the legal right, not right as demanding my rights, but God has given me the legal right to approach his throne, not based on my own righteousness, mm -hmm. but on the righteousness of Christ that has been given me mm -hmm. because my own righteousness is flawed. We also read in one service, I didn't do it in the other, Jeremiah 17, which talks about not trusting yourself, and it says our heart is deceitful and desperately wicked above all things. Who can know it? So we can't trust ourselves, but we can trust God. And if God says we're righteous, then we got to go, well, you know better than me. So if you say I'm righteous, mm -hmm. I'm going to go with that, even though in my heart I know my own failures and sins and temptations. Mm -hmm. um, that sounds like a good humility. So, yeah. That, oh, well, let, let me yeah. round that okay. out. I was going to say, so walking in that and then truly trusting God, like for impossible situations. Yesterday, my wife and I, and I'm not going to share this with everybody, but I will share this much. We 
are now faced with an impossible situation. Hmm. How will we walk through that? Eventually, everybody will know about it because how can you not? But we will have to walk in, in integrity through very mm -hmm. difficult time uh, in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And, and um, so where we trust God, we try to follow God as closely as we can. But we have to just trust God that he's going to bring all things to his good, mm -hmm. to his glory and our good eventually. Mm -hmm. And it may take death and heaven to see that. Mm -hmm. But trusting God even till death is the, to me, the greatest, not the greatest, but one of the greatest examples in the Bible that I like the most is the three boys that went in the furnace in Daniel and the king said, we're going to throw you in the furnace. And, uh, and they said, okay, our God can save us. But even if our God doesn't let you better understand this king, we will not bow to your idol. And so they would bow only to God, even mm -hmm. if it costs them their life. And of course, in that story, they get rescued. But now we've got thousands of stories in history of Christians who would not say Caesar is Lord and are thrown to lions or burned at the stake and they went or hung on a cross and mm -hmm. said, for the glory of God, I'll do it. And, mm -hmm. and do we trust God enough that not only will we live for him, but will we die for him? And so Paul said, I die daily. So when he came to his life, he said, I'm going to be poured out as a drink offering, but I've run the course, I've kept the faith and I've, mm -hmm. I've, I've, finished, I've finished my course, I've kept the faith and mm -hmm. I'm ready to go. That's a... That's a 35,000 foot uh, view. Bring us down to the... Yeah, sorry. <laughs> bring us down to the six foot view. How's that going to look as we live out faith, the little things? How's it going to... What are we going to see more and more or hear about? So-and-so did... Boy, so-and-so is stepping out in faith. Well, how do you know that? Yeah. Well, let me tell you what I they saw. Sur yeah, they, yeah. That they, they have done things. They have followed God even if it hurt them. And... That, that there's a daily dependence on God that is evidenced by, if I'm going to depend on God daily, I ought to know what he says daily. I ought to pray to him daily. I ought to trust him in my finances by giving uh, to the church as I should and using the leftover in a, in a, in a way of integrity and, mm -hmm. and helping others and doing things. The, the, it, it's not spectacular. And that's... Mm -hmm. um, you know, there there are times there are people in individual situations where it is spectacular, but the real work of Christianity is is seen in just the drudgery of everyday following God, and it's not a drudgery. But it, you know, one author and preacher that I like is Vance Havner, and he wrote a, a sermon. He talked about it as a kind of a devotional thought of that God sometimes reveals Himself. Says some days He stamps. I'll explain this one later. But our Christianity is seen just living through gray days mm -hmm. where we don't have the light of revelation, neither are we in the depths. It's just, mm -hmm. you know, sort of like the, the other illustration of that is um, I cannot remember every meal I've ever eaten. But the fact that I'm here and healthy tells you I've been eating meals regularly, that we have to be walking with God daily and regularly. And then we look back and go, oh, I've grown. Mm -hmm. um, and, and so to trust God, to believe in God is to not not let anxiety get the best of you. Perfect love mm -hmm. casts out fear. Um, anxiety is going to come. It, it's not not going to come. But to not give in to that fear, not to walk in that fear, but to walk in faith and to, to believe the gospel that, that this is what I was, but now this is what I am. Mm -hmm. And those don't look alike. I, I have observed this now. We're going to, we were going to do it short and I could have shut up, but I'm not <laughs> going to. Um, I, the, the president of the seminary that I went to um, was talking one day, and what he said was a revelation to me, and I went, oh, now I get it. He said that he in, is the most uptight guy he knew. Nobody at that school ever thought of him as being uptight. Hmm. And what I realized was that God's grace was so great on him that he looked relaxed and could govern the school in a relaxed manner, but in his heart, he knew he was actually uptight and anxious. Hmm. But God's grace was so great, it overcame that. And, and I realized that sometimes in our own lives, if we walk in the spirit and we are producing the fruit of the spirit, that in our heart, because we know ourselves a little bit better than the, what people see, we know that I'm actually having this issue. But out here, God's grace has made it made me look different to everybody else. Mm. And I was like, okay, so we 
really just surrender that to God and say, no matter what I think of myself, this is what you say, and I'm going to act according to how you said I should act, mm -hmm. even if I don't feel it. Mm -hmm. and, and we may never understand how much God's grace has worked in our life until we get to heaven. Mm -hmm. I, I sincerely believe that, uh, mm -hmm. that, that God's grace overcomes things, and we're not even necessarily aware of it. As, as a kid, you don't feel that you're growing. But if you see your grandma once a year and she goes, oh, you've grown so much, <laughs> that that's going to be kind of a self-revelation in heaven. The guys go, are you kidding? Look, I brought you from there to there. And you go, wow, mm. didn't notice that. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, we don't see ourselves as easily as other people around us see us. Mm -hmm. And God sees us perfectly. So mm. okay. um, now, I'm, now I'm just rambling. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, that uh, brings it to a close of our sermon recap. Yes. Um, let us know what you think. Give us some yes, thoughts and do. send in questions, that kind of stuff. And if you have questions, send them in. I never thought to say that before. Yeah, yeah, send them in uh, however you like. You can do uh, a honeycut at cbcstanton.org or however you like. You can text me. That'd be cool, too. So uh, God bless yep. you, and thanks for tuning in. See ya. See ya.